you know, I got a sense of humor like most people, but there is not enough coffee for this kind of bull. <laughs> We are going to talk about the top 10 things that you need to know if you are going to Guam. And this is whether you're military or not, but it's mostly for the military guys. But if you plan on going to Guam, these are 10 things that you need to know. Number 10, passports. You would think if it's a U.S. territory, you wouldn't need a passport at all. If you're in the military, you definitely need what's called a no-fee passport. You don't really need a civilian passport unless you are going on holiday, unless you're going just for the fun of it. You need a no-fee passport if you're military. Like if you're going on leave and you want to go to Bali or Japan or China or Hong Kong, if you want to go to any of these places, you cannot go on your no-fee government passport. So make sure you get both. Get the no-fee passport and get the civilian passport when you're going to Guam. Number nine, cell phones. Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, Cricket, AT&T, that's all I can think of. It doesn't matter who your provider is because you probably don't have the only two cellular providers that work on Guam. GTA and Docomo. Yeah, I never heard of them either. But whether you've heard of them or not, those are the only two providers that work on Guam. Good news for you is they're not all that different as far as rate wise from many other services. I personally went with Docomo. I'm not personally endorsing them. Uh, it worked for the year that I was there. Um, other people had GTA and said that it worked okay. Number eight, the weather. The weather is probably the most predictable thing about Guam. It's always hot, it's always humid. Um, the only thing that really changes is whether or not it's going to rain. Guam really only has two seasons, either the rainy season or the not rainy season. If you're gonna ship your car over, put some brand new tires on it, preferably some all weather tires because the roads in Guam are very, very difficult to maneuver, especially when they're wet. Number seven, the housing situation. This part of the video, I am talking specifically to the military that are going to Guam. Listen to me right now. It's so much easier, especially if you have a family, it's so much easier just to live on base. The utilities are outlandish in Guam. I'm talking $400 a month for electricity, just for electricity. Our landlord tried to take us for every single dime of our security deposit. We damn near had to take her to court over it. You'll thank me when you're moving out and everything is smooth and you're not having these issues and you're not still dealing with some lady in Guam who's trying to keep your entire security deposit. It's absolutely incredible. Just stay on base. Number six, the post office. There's only one post office in Guam, number one. And number two, most of the off-base houses in Guam don't have a mailbox. People will steal the mail right out of your mailbox. So much so to the point where most people on Guam have a P.O. box. That might not be a big problem if it was a post office in New York, but on Guam, uh, well, it's not very fast. It's not very efficient. And it's also kind of a pain in the ass to get through. If normal travel time from coast to coast in the United States is three days, double it. Maybe even triple it. It takes a long, long time to get to Guam. Sidestepping that post office is probably one of the better excuses to live on base instead of off base. If you don't have to deal with that post office, don't. Number five, it's expensive. Whether you live on base or off base in Guam, you're going to find yourself making this face quite a bit. How much is that? A bottle of simply orange orange juice will set you back $8. $8. Seafood is outlandishly expensive in a landlocked state like Kansas or Oklahoma. Seafood is less expensive there than on Guam. The main grocery store on Guam, ironically, is called Payless. Yeah, like the shoe place. Colloquially in Guam, it's referred to as pay more because everything is very expensive in these grocery stores. 
Number four, the blackouts. We had several blackouts while I was stationed in Guam, but never more than, I would say, two or three hours. That was like the longest one. At the very least, do the minimum. Get yourself a good flashlight, some, some non-perishable food, some water, some things that could get you through the next few days. Number three, the locals. Don't go into Guam thinking that it's going to be just another state in the Union, because it's not. Guam is a completely different country, and you need to approach it like a completely different country. The locals in Guam are kind of split down the middle. I and mean, there are some people in Guam who believe that Americans should not be there. There are some people who definitely have some resistance to Americans, that don't like Americans, that may have an issue with us. But... Way more times, I had people do the exact opposite. People looked at me just as a regular guy. You are going to stick out like a sore thumb because they know you're military. So conduct yourself appropriately. Make sure you don't give your particular branch a bad rap. Number two, the time difference. Right now, it's about 7 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday morning here in San Diego, California which means that right now in Guam, it's 1 p.m. on Monday afternoon. Just wrap your brain around that for a second. If you're trying to call somebody in Guam on a Friday morning and you're not getting through to anyone and you're wondering, well, what the heck, man? Don't these guys work on Friday? Well, it's because it's already Saturday in Guam. When we flew from Guam back to the United States, we flew on a... I believe it was a Friday morning and we arrived on that exact same Friday morning. It's like some freaky time travel stuff, man. So just something to kick around the noggin when you're uh, communicating with your sponsor back and forth in Guam. There may be some free floating anger towards the end here, so don't say I didn't warn you. Number one, driving. really been trying to hold my tongue up until now. I have very good people that I've met in Guam. I have very good people that I met before Guam that were from there. But the whole reason I came up with this list was for this topic, driving on Guam. Guam almost makes LA traffic look tolerable. The highest speed limit you'll find on a public road in Guam is 35 miles an hour. Almost nobody follows that law. I think, I think, secretly, in Guam, people really, really want to die. I really do. Why else would someone pull in front of a minivan in a Yaris going 10 miles an hour while I'm doing 50, pull out in front of you, and just not even have the slightest regard for what's going on around them? I have no idea why someone would do that unless they just really, really are tired of life. And the worst part about Guam, as far as driving goes, is you have to have a car in Guam. Plus, there's no reliable public transportation. There are no buses, there's no subways, there's no trains, nothing like that. So, you have to have a vehicle if you're going to live, especially if you live off base, you have to have a car. I would really be afraid for my son walking on the side of the road in Guam. Because people drive so terribly, he, they'd probably hit him. And he's 14 and he's damn near six feet tall. It's almost a good thing that these people are in Guam because they couldn't survive on a road anywhere else. When I went to Guam, I was like the most chill driver of all time. Let me not lie, not the most chill driver of all time, but I was definitely a lot better off than I am now. One year of driving in Guam and I have extreme road rage, really bad road rage and really bad nerves for one year of driving in Guam. It's that bad. Live on base so you don't have to make that drive to and from wherever your base is, whether it's Big Navy or Anderson. Live on base so you don't have to make that drive every damn day. I need a break. Hold on. Oh, man. You know, you know, man, I, I got a sense of humor like most people, but there is just not enough coffee for this kind of bullshit. People are going to be watching this and thinking, oh, man, he's exaggerating every single day. No, man, every single day. Yeah, you might have to wait a few minutes for the traffic to clear up so you can pull in. You wait. 
You don't cut off the guy that's barreling down the road at 50 miles an hour so you can jump in and go 15 miles an hour. Watch your ass when you're driving in Guam. Be careful. Make sure you have full coverage insurance on your car. Incidentally, if you have Geico like I used to, you're going to have to switch because Geico won't insure your vehicle on Guam. And I can see why. Because people there are so damn dumb that they, they, they probably had too many problems in Guam and they won't even insure anybody. This is bullshit.